And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make a meal that you could prepare any night of the week, or it's good for special occasions. If you've got company, this is a... It uh, uh, can be a simple meal, it can be a fancy meal, depending on how you want to present it. We're going to make hamburger steaks with a glazed onion topping. To go alongside that, we're going to make stuffed baked potatoes and then a baked peach, or excuse me, not peach, but pear, ambrosia. Delicious and easy, but we're going to get started on our hamburger steaks. Now, I have got here on my stovetop a grill pan. But if you have cast iron, I would do this on cast iron because that gives the burgers that crust that's wonderful. Or you could grill the hamburger steaks outside if you wanted to on a grill and then just bring them in and put the onions over top, whatever you wanted to do. So I've got that preheating. And then I've got a large skillet here that we will work on the onions. In this bowl, I've got about a little over two pounds, maybe two and a half pounds of ground chuck, you could use ground chuck or ground sirloin, either one, to that mixture. I'm going to add, this is a um, steak seasoning spice mixture that you can find in your spice section. It's got pepper and salt. Sometimes the different blends will have different ingredients. This particular one has got a little bit of dried onion in it, a little bit of caraway seed, any of those spice mixtures for steak or burgers will be fine, any of those. I'm also going to add some dried Italian seasoning. Then I'm going to add a little bit of extra pepper because I like pepper. Now that seasoning blend had some salt in it, so I'm not going to add any salt. And then finally, some Worcestershire sauce. Now let me get my bowl over here. Clean hands. Just mix that together. Don't overwork it because that will make your burgers tough. And it really, in essence, we are making burger patties, but we're going to call them hamburger steaks. This is something that we like in our home quite often. We make this because it's easy and it's quick and it just makes a delicious meal. Now, what I do is I get however big you want your patties to be. I loosely form it into a circle with my hands, and then I lightly press on a board, or you can do it in your hands, either way, however you want to do it. You don't want to pack it down in there too tight, because you don't want a hockey puck. You want a nice, wonderfully delicious hamburger steak. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick. This works with hamburgers, turkey burgers, chicken burgers, whatever you're doing, or hamburger steaks. Make them in an oval if you want to or just round. If you will take your fingers and in the middle make an indent almost all the way down to the bottom, what will happen as they cook is that will puff up and you won't get that dome shape that you sometimes can get on burgers. I'm going to just put those on my pan. That's hot. Now, that's a nonstick one, so I don't need to add any oil or spray it or anything. If you need to spray it, you can. So just shape. This will make about six hamburger steaks, so you can adjust it to however many you need. I'll tell you something I do at home, as, as you probably know, you may not know, but I have two children, two boys. They're teenagers. And I always try to plan my meals for the week based around leftovers so that I can pack this the next day in their lunch box. So this is one of those things that makes a great next day lunch too. For your children, if they have access to a microwave at school, or for you, for your lunch. That's a good way to just stretch your food budget. And it's better than grabbing a fast food something. 
better for you and it tastes better. So we're just going to make these up. This is another thing. If you find yourself maybe with an abundance of ground chuck or ground sirloin, you could make these patties up like this and freeze them. And then when you're, you know, that morning, take them out of the freezer, they'll be thawed by the time you get home and ready to cook. And they'll cook, you know, and, and under, you can have dinner on the stove or on, on your dinner table in under 30 minutes. Doesn't take very long to cook this. So I'm just going to get these on the stove. Hear them sizzling. Oh, I love them. They're so good. And remember the rule I have, I don't put my raw meat on my wooden board. There are some mixed reviews out there. Some people say you can do it as long as you wash it with good hot soapy water. I just, am, I just don't do it. So make sure that if you do put your raw meats on your wooden cutting board that you clean it very well before you do anything else on it. All right, so let's get this in the sink. And wash our hands while our burger patties sizzle away. Anytime you touch raw meat, remember you do need to wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. And we will get started on our onion glaze. If you'll notice under the board, I put a little, these are those little grippy things that you can open jars with. I always put one of those underneath my boards. Keeps them from slipping around. It just makes it a little safer. Now I'm going to get this pan preheating. Now, if you wanted to cook your hamburger steaks in your skillet and then take them out and make the onions, you would save yourself a dish. But... For my purposes here today, we're going to use two separate ones. Let's check those. Oh, yeah. See why I like to use the hamburgers or the, the little griddle pan? Because it puts those grill marks on there. Not that that makes it taste any better. It doesn't, but it just looks pretty. Let's leave these last two to go a minute because they've not been on there as long. I always, always cook ground beef to well done. I don't ever do the medium or the medium well on those. They've got, I don't believe that knife needs sharpening. I don't believe you should eat ground beef, anything but well done. That was a lesson learned. I ate a burger one time that had just the slightest little bit of pink in the center which may not have had anything to do with it, but Mike and I both ate them, and we both got food poisoning, so I'm just a little leery of eating any ground meat that's less than well done. I'm going to take a quick break. All I'm going to do is chop these uh, or slice these onions up. That one's got a little bad place in the middle. I'll get that out of there. And then when I come back, we're going to start on our onions check on our uh, hamburger steaks and get started on our potatoes. I'll be back in just a minute. All right, now I flipped our other two burgers and I'm just added about two tablespoons or so uh, canola oil, vegetable oil, you could even use olive oil, into my pan. And I'm just going to slice my onions in what they call pole to pole, which is the top to the bottom. Oh, I need my little scooper. I love this thing. It's actually called a bench scraper. It's a baker's tool, but I use it for moving food. Most people do. Slice your onions kind of thin. And you could use as many or as few as you wanted. If you wanted to add a pepper to it, you could. Like a green pepper would be delicious, actually. So you could do that. A little strong. Making my eyes water. 
This onion had a little place in the center, and I just cut that out. You can do that. You can just, you know, cut away the part that's maybe not the best. The rest of the onion is perfectly good. And that's one thing with onions you never know until you cut into it. There's not any way to tell at the store. So we're just going to saute these onions until they are cooked through. Whew, making my eyes water. Get that juice up. I used to wear contacts all the time, and I could chop onions all day long, and it did not bother me at all. Now, no. So it had to have something to do with the contact covering that part of the eye. That has to be where the onion tears come from. Okay, I'm gonna let those go for just a minute. Now, I already have some baked potatoes. This is something you can do in your oven. You can actually put them in your crock pot, would be good. You can do them however, but I just wrapped them in foil and baked them this morning for about two hours because these are big potatoes. So I'm just going to take my potato out of the foil and you can leave them whole or you can cut them in half, which is what I'm gonna do because these are huge. So let's see, let's get them one at a time. Now I've got a bowl here that has a little bit of sour cream in it, some butter, some salt and some pepper, and I'm going to cut my potato in half. And if you will take a tiny, tiny little sliver off of the bottom part of the potato that sticks out, your potato will lay flatter. Do a little more on that one not necessary, it just makes it a little bit easier. And then you wanna take a spoon. Let me get a clean spoon here. And scoop out the potato into your bowl. Leaving a little bit of the potato around the edges to give it a little bit of stability. Check my hamburger steak. And then you want to just put that down in the uh, baking dish. You'll need a little baking dish. So I'm just going to scoop all of this out into the bowl. was scoop out the flesh from my potatoes and put them into two different baking dishes. Added the sour cream, the butter, and the salt and the pepper. And I'm just using a potato masher. If you don't have one of these, you could just use a spoon or, you know, a couple of forks or, you know, your mixer even. And I just am going to incorporate all of those ingredients together with my potato masher because I like the texture of these to be just a little bit, got a little bit of um, chunks, lumpy, if you will. Now, all I did was scoop my hamburger patties together and just put them under here to keep it from splattering so much. I've sauteed my onions. They are tender, and I'm going to add some, you can either use red wine vinegar or balsamic vinegar. I'm using balsamic. You don't use the expensive stuff for this. I like the Alessi brand. It's A-L-E-S-S-I, I believe it's called. You can get it at your regular grocery store. It's like $4, and I think it's really good. And a little bit of beef stock. What I'm going to do is let this reduce. Let these liquids simmer and reduce, and they're going to glaze those onions. 
and it will be this wonderful gravy to go over top of our hamburger steaks. I'm gonna add a little salt and a little bit of pepper that is freshly ground. I just have it in a little container over here because I do not like that pre-ground stuff. You don't know how long that's been sitting on the shelves and it's, I don't think, good. Now, I'm gonna stuff my potatoes. Let me switch out here. Ah. I need more hands. With this mixture, and I'm gonna add in some cheddar cheese. Now, you can put the cheddar cheese in there if you want, you can mix it, or you can just top it with a little bit. I'm just gonna top it. Take your potato skins and just mound that filling in there. Make sure now, don't overstuff them till you get them all filled, and then if you have some leftover, you can stuff it some more. But make sure you do leave some for every little potato half. Uh, you could do these whole if you wanted and just cut off like maybe the top fourth, but these were so big that I decided it would be better just to do halves. You know, that depends on the size of your potato. These were big. And if you had some chives, you could add some chives to it. You could add some parsley to it, which I'm going to do. Let me show you real quick how to finish these, and then we'll take a break. Just add some cheese on top. just like that, and then a little bit of parsley, just to add a little freshness to it. Chop it, I like the flat leaf better than curly leaf. I just think it tastes better. This is flat leaf Italian parsley. You could chop this and mix it in with the filling too, however you wanted to do it. and then just sprinkle a little bit of that over each one. Pop them in the oven at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes, and you will have a wonderful, delicious stuffed baked potato. I'm just gonna finish stuffing these, get all this in the oven, check on the hamburger steaks, and when I come back, we are going to make our wonderful dessert. I'll be back in just a minute. chopped a little extra parsley because I had it and added it to the onions. That's not necessary, but if you have it, add it to there. Just add a little brightness to it. The potatoes are in the oven. Our onions are just simmering away. I want that to reduce down to a glaze. Our burgers, I just put on, I keep calling them burgers, they're hamburger steaks. I keep, uh, I put my stove down on low just to keep those warm. Now, in this dish, I have two cans of pear halves that I have drained and I reserved about half a cup of the liquid and I just put those cut side up in this baking dish and I've also got a can of mandarin oranges that I'm gonna sprinkle over it. This is a warm dessert that you could serve as is. You could serve it over maybe some crushed uh, ginger snaps would be delicious or with some ice cream. That would be good. Okay. Then I have here a couple of limes, and I'm going to use a zester. I mean, not a zester, but a peeling, a julienne peeler. And I'm going to peel off the outer green part of the lime. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what we're going to do here. If you don't have one of these little peelers, you can use a little paring knife. Just be careful not to get too much of the, the white part. And then take your little strips of peel. This is the same. You know how we always zest our lemons? 
Well, the reason I do that is because there's so much flavor in that. So I like to stack them up and then take a sharp knife and slice them very, very thinly. Of course, these are scrubbed. You don't want too much, just a little bit. We're just making little thin strips. Okay, just like that. And if you want to go over it, chop it a little more, you can. You could zest it if you wanted to. But I like that little bite. Not too much. You just put a little bit over. You know, probably half of a lime would be enough. And then I'm going to, remember I said we reserved our pear juices? I've got about half a cup, or actually about three-fourths of a cup, and I've got a little bit of brown sugar. I'm going to add a pinch of salt, not too much, just a pinch. Grab a spoon. The salt brings out something in that. I always add just a pinch of salt, not, not even an eighth of a teaspoon. And then I'm going to stir that and then just pour it, distributing that brown sugar because it won't dissolve. So make sure you distribute that brown sugar. I'm going to put about half of it over my pears. Then I'm going to sprinkle some grated coconut, just shredded coconut, over top. As much or as little as you like. And then pour the rest of that syrup mixture over top. Put that in the oven alongside our potatoes and let that bake for about 30 minutes. It's going to get that in the oven. When I come back, our dinner will be ready. Okay, dinner is done. Now here is our wonderful baked ambrosia with the pear halves and the mandarin oranges. And you could put any kind of fruit you wanted to in this. You could, you know, put some maraschino cherries if you wanted. You could put peaches. You could put apples. You could do anything you wanted. I just chose the pear halves and the mandarin oranges with the lime peel and then made that beautiful little glaze. I would serve this in a, in a little dish coconut gets toasted in there oh it's so good put a little bit in your dish and then you could top that with some ice cream if you wanted or just as is i'm going to take the lime that i zested and i'm going to squeeze the juice right before i serve it that just adds a little tiny bit of freshness to it you've got that wonderful lime zest in there, but I like to add just a little bit more lime to mine. Then, set that to the side here. It's hot. We've got our wonderful potatoes. See, we just put those in the oven until the cheese melted. You could add in crumbled bacon to this. You could add in anything you wanted. Whatever you like in your stuffed potatoes, whatever you like on your baked potato, you could put in this. You could really make this a meal. If you wanted to add in some, um, you know, some diced chicken or uh, leftover hamburger steaks, chop that up and put in there, you could make a whole meal out of it. Add some broccoli to it, and there you go. You've got, I mean, you could really make this however you wanted to. I want you to see the onions. Now, remember, we put in the balsamic vinegar and the beef stock, and we let that simmer until 95 or more percent of the liquid evaporated. And what that does is that glazes those onions. And again, if you wanted to add a pepper to that, a green pepper or a red pepper, you could do that. So the way I like to serve this is take one of your hamburger steaks and put that on your plate and then add some onions over top of that. 
and there you go. A wonderful, wonderful meal. You could garnish it with a little more parsley if you wanted to to make it pretty, however you wanted to do it. So there's a quick and easy meal. You could make the potatoes, bake them ahead of time, and have them, you know, when you are got your oven on one day, go ahead and bake your potatoes and put them in the refrigerator, and then they're done. All you got to do is scoop out the flesh to make it quicker, or you could wrap them in foil. I would wrap them in foil. You don't have to, but I like to do that. Wrap them in foil, put them in your crock pot, put it on low and all day long while you're gone to work or school or whatever you're doing, and then they'll be done when you get home. You could do it that way, or you could just bake them however you wanted to do it. But to save time, sometimes it's easier to have the longer cooking thing, which is actually the potatoes, have them done ahead. So there's a quick and easy meal, a wonderful hamburger steak with glazed onions, a stuffed baked potato, and a baked ambrosia for any time, an elegant to serve to your family, to your guests. It's delicious. Thank you for joining with me, and I will see you next time on Everyday Manna. Thank you for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.